This is Code.org, and we're going to investigate and modify. Run the program to observe the results. Then experiment with the program by making the following modifications. Change one in a line at a time, then run the program after each change to observe the results. What happens when you run the program? Which line causes an error? Smack and run. Ooh, yikes. Ooh, stop, stop too much. Oh, okay, so, uh... Now, we can try to hunt this down, right? There's something here, Wisconsin, blah, blah, blah. It's print in the States, but it says your code has an exception while it's running. The exception message, array index out of bounds, index 50, out of bounds for length 50. So we're trying to go past the end of an array. If it's an array of states, I already know why, because there's 50 states, which means the end of the array is 49, because we start at zero. Now... This should tell us the line number at states print pair states 32. And so this is super handy. And all modern programming and IDEs do this. They'll give you the line number of the error. IDA is um, it's also called integrated development environment. It could be like VS Code or IntelliJ, so on and so forth. All right. Bam, bam. My cancel. So 32 right here. So this might be there, but also notice this. So you might be thinking, wait a minute, was it my council main line 13? Well, let's look. Line 13. Mr. Geyser, what? That's not even, what do you mean line 13? There's nothing here. Or is it line 32? So what's occurring is what triggered this was line 12. And so it wanted to return. It wanted to return, but it couldn't get past it, right? So it aired out right here. However, it didn't actually air here. This is what called what aired, and this is what would have aired. Now, let's take a look at what it could have been. Oh, change the condition of line of the for loop on line 23. What? So, they must have moved stuff around a bit because new, but I can change this here. And I can add in minus one. And let's see what happens. And that is more successful. So the index has to stay under the actual length. Oh, and so the issue, guys, here, I was right here, we compare two values, right? So in my head, I was like, why would it matter if we go to the end of this array? We would stop at 49 because 50 would be the largest index. However, now we stop at 48. And the reason we want to add this minus one in the 48th index, whatever this list is, uh, is Wyoming. So what the reason we would want to do this is down here, we're not only looking at the state at 48 or 49, we're looking at one above it. So we need to stop at 48 because it's going to add 1 to 48, which is 49, and error out otherwise. And my counsel add the following lines. Okay. Copy. Paste. And bam, bam. Change the file uh, to... Got it. Read. Okay. Does the program still work as expected? Oh, that's cool. So now it does miles and population, and before it just did population. That's super cool. Now, what's occurring here? Let's just take a deeper look at this. So we have a file reader, and then we have a string of states and a population. We use our file reader class right here, which establishes the access and creates the scanner that allows us to do this. So right here, as a member of the class of file reader is the scanner object and the file itself. That allows us to access it, as we saw in the last bubble. And then what we're getting, what we're able to do is once we can access it, we give it the length of data we want to grab. So my file reader get data 50, and that should get areas. One second. So we set the file to areas, which is this. We grab the data for 50, and then we grab the areas and then we do my states set data to areas. Oh, that's super cool. So that means the states now should have right here, we set the data of states. So now the states should have access to the actual length. Data is going to be the area 
And that's what's occurring right here, set data to areas. And that's why we can now loop. Oh, that's super cool. So we read from this file, grab the data, and then we read from, well, we do, let's see, state names, population. Oh, it's not the area, it's the population. Yeah, of course. So we grab all of that data and then we create a new state using it, state names and population. Then we print the population. However, then we grab the areas from the areas file. And then we set that up in there. And once we have changed the data over to areas, we print it again. That's really, really neat. This is pretty powerful stuff, guys. I can't wait to see what we do with it. Onward.